Hi, my name is Edith Young. I am a partner at 500 Startups, focused on and run the mobile fund. And lately, also get really into VR. Um, have done two VR investments so far, so Penrose uh, and Cryworks. So today, I'm very, very excited to have all our, as I said earlier, very sexy and rich and happy investors who are sitting here and going to talk about sexy tech. And um, we're only two sessions away from happy hour. So that's why we really need to you know, live a little. I think out of this, all the session for, for the conference today, this is probably, I think, one of the most interesting. Uh, so, but before we get into detail, I have some statistic earlier. Of course, Evernote doesn't really work when I need it. Uh, just a c some statistics. Uh, since 2010, 1.1 billion have invested in AR and VR, and 7.4 billion invested in IoT. And another 285 million invested in the, in drones so far, and earlier this year, Obama actually just approved a plan, a four billion dollar plan to help enable driverless car and want to improve regulations and infrastructure. So there's tons of money going into this area, sexy tech area. So now I want to actually quickly have our awesome sexy pa uh, panelists and investors to introduce themselves. Um, what do you focus on? Um, in terms of investment, and what stage and what size of checks you, you do? Hi. <coughs> Hi. Yes. <laughs> yes. Paid Are you going to do the dance now? No, I'm not okay. going to do the dance. That's too bad. All right. Happy hour. Happy hour time. <laughs> okay. um, so uh, my name is Greg Castle. I am a angel investor um, focusing on VR, AR, um, Robotics, computer vision, autonomous vehicles, kind of run the gamut on frontier tech, um, mainly looking for um, really specialized teams solving really hard problems. Um, I invest pre-seed and seed. I've got a fair amount of flexibility, um, rarely A, but um, mainly very early stage. Well, well, what's that supposed to mean, pre-seed? How much are we talking about? <laughs> um, Pre-seed, I basically classify pre-seed as two guys and an idea. So kind of pre-proof of concept. Can, can, we, can I get half a million from you or? Do you have an idea? Okay. <laughs> of course, I'm good people in a garage. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sahin, with Lux Capital. By the way, I was going to say that we should have had the Right Said Fred song playing in the background when we came on the, on the panel. That would have been so appropriate. But anyway. Um, so I'm with an early stage venture capital firm called Lux. We've been around for 15 years, and we started life investing in nanotechnology. We then went on to invest in therapeutics and semiconductors, and I'm a semiconductor guy by training, so when I joined, we did a few chip companies uh, about 10 years ago. More recently, we've been doing things in 3D printing, 3D scanning, satellites, driverless cars, drones, surgical robotics, VR. Um, so we like to invest where capital is scarce, barriers are high, and um, great entrepreneurs are using technology to solve uh, big problems. So we're based in Menlo Park, we have an office in New York, and uh, check sizes range typically from five to 10, 12 million dollars to lead series A rounds. We also do seed investing. Um, uh, you know, like Greg said, you know, very smart entrepreneurs, again, trying to solve big problems, and uh, Great to be on this panel. I, first, I was a little disappointed because I thought this was the sexy VC panel. It's actually the sexy tech panel. Um, but anyway. It's not my fault. All right. Aaron, Enjoy. Lightspeed Ventures. Yeah, hi, Aaron Battalion. Uh, just joined Lightspeed Venture Partners about six months ago. I uh, was an angel for a handful of years before that. Um, focus on seed in Series A, um, sort of 1 million to 15 or 20. Um, and I've recently been focusing on AR, VR. We just announced a drone deal today um, called Kespri. Um, and excited to be here. Thank you. And Ajay from Samsung Venture. Hi, guys. Uh, Ajay Singh from Samsung uh, uh, Global Innovation Center. We are based out of Mountain View. Also have offices in New York and Israel. Uh, we are also doing early stage ventures, so seed, series A, and B rounds. We cut checks from $250,000 to upwards of a couple of millions. Uh, we do lead or follow, so we are agnostic in terms of how we come into the cap table. Uh, in terms of focus, we are very broad. We have done uh, IoT, health, education, uh, big data, artificial intelligence, AR, VR. I uh, professionally focus on artificial intelligence and AR, VR space uh, at Samsung. Okay. 
Okay, so let's get a little bit more personal. I know what your firm does. Um, and we basically, you guys cover everything sexy. So I just want to know this one area that you're most excited about, why, and why now? Great. By the way, he, his first angel investment is Oculus. So... It's biased. Not, not bad, Greg. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It um, went downhill from then on. Yeah. <laughs> ne never, never get that again. Um, <laughs> One area that I am most excited about. Um, I would say probably um, uh, light field technology is of great interest to me. Um, that is um, uh, essentially um, being able to <clears throat> capture um, the world around you um, and have also six degrees of motion so you can you can pivot around. The standard VR is basically 360 video that you see on Facebook is basically your head on a pivot and you can look around and it's basically a spherical picture around you. Um, not very immersive, not real VR, what, what I would call real VR. Real VR is actually being transported into an experience that you, you can move around in. Um, and look behind objects and different things like that. Very, very difficult problem. Um, and, um, and one, am I getting a picture as I'm <laughs> And one that, um, that I've been really digging into and, um, and, and interests me greatly. I'm excited about autonomy uh, broadly. Not so Star Trek? I'm sorry? Not Star Trek? No Star, well, Star Trek, we'll, we'll get there. Um, but uh, I think the technology is there. I think Mark Andreessen said it pretty well. There was armies of researchers at government-funded labs that were doing stuff in this area. That same work was replicated by the private sector at big companies and then startup companies like Kyle at Cruz. And now you have one guy, Greg Hotz, basically um, building a driverless car company. So the technology is there. Um, we're seeing that in drones. We're seeing that in autonomous robots driving around. So it's less about the technology now, more about the entrepreneurs with the vision that can turn those capabilities into something um, uh, exciting as a, as a business, so. Uh, I think one area that's interesting is sort of the new streams of data and how really incredible entrepreneurs are turning those into businesses. Uh, Greg mentioned light field. Um, we can now capture literally the light refracting off an object and the vector which it is refracting in order to capture this volumetric content that we can walk around. We're talking to founders that are building consumer health tech companies based on being able to ingest new data streams and through that do things like new diagnostics on health related issues, um, all the way to drone companies that are capturing um, pieces of data via CV that we can never do before. So I think to the, the common layer through all of this is finding new ways to extract a new piece of data from the world. Um, I think Jeff Lawson has a great talk on this from a few years ago um, of, of building companies around new data streams that I think is really fascinating and very applicable in the sexy tech world. So I do agree um, with the fellow panelists. I think Lightfield is quite interesting. We ended up investing in a company called ATI, which does uh, exactly the same thing, capturing people in, in uh, true environments, so it, it becomes highly immersive. You feel that you're with that person. Uh, but taking a step back broadly, I think uh, we're at an interesting time right now. We're coming out of this information paradigm where everybody, everybody was telling you something through chat or whatever, and, and you were consuming that, but now we are moving into the experience paradigm where I think the companies like AI or, or the paradigms like AR, VR in this new medium are gonna create is where you could be part of an experience. And I think as a whole, what consumer experience is gonna be is, is still to be figured out, but I think that's what I think these new companies are trying to explore now. So that's what I'm excited about. I think it's exciting because they all sound so cool, but none of these guys make any money, right? So we have so many fellow investors in this room. Obviously, everybody wanted to like, get into the hot, sexy deal, but how do you evaluate some of these deals if they don't make any anything? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I was thinking about the other day, kind of, you know, investing in, in fringe technology and in 
ecosystems and businesses that don't yet exist is, you know, is, is, is amazingly challenging um, and has its own set of dynamics. Um, and it's something that I'm kind of just getting to grips with myself. Um, I think, you know, the way that, the way that I evaluate um, businesses in frontier technology is basically it starts overall with a thesis. So do I believe that that VR is going to play a major part in the future? Do I believe that in the future my cell phone is going to be replaced by a wearable and something on my face? So you've got to have conviction about what the future about a certain sector, I think. Once you have that, um, then um, you need to find out the problems that are core to that particular sector and find teams that are solving those problems. Um, and so, you know, what it really comes down to, I guess in summary, is, is the, you know, your thesis, your investment thesis on particular sectors and then finding the right team of super smart people um, who are going to tackle and form what potentially in the future could be foundational layers for that sector which you have conviction is going to play a major part in the future. Yeah, this time you need to argue. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe I'll agree just for a sec, then I'll yell at Greg. Um, <laughs> if, you're, if you're a fanboy of the future, now is a pretty amazing time to be an investor. Um, if you go back a decade or two decades, there were sort of single innovations that occurred on a large scale, but that created a lot of value, whether it's the internet or whether it's mobile, um, or there's a handful of others, but m much fewer single innovations. I, I became a VC now because I think there are probably a dozen core types of technology that if we ride the wave correctly, the founders do well, the VCs do well, and we build products that touch millions of people. Um, and it's sort of never before in my adult life that there have been so many independent potential waves of tech, um, and that's what's pretty exciting about this fringe world. Timing it is pretty important, um, but there's a lot of shots on goal that can happen right now in history that I've never seen before. No, when I first started in VC about a decade ago, um, I, 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 was, uh, I was an entrepreneur, not a great one, which is why I became a VC. And uh, you know, my, my biggest fear was you know, being a technology investor, it was a technology not working. Uh, I was putting a lot of emphasis on, you know, can this team actually build it, you know, can, can it, will it work? And I realized that all of that was a moot point because without exception, all of the teams that I'd backed and all the teams that I saw my fellow VCs backing were able to build technologies that, that did work. The, the problem was that the markets just didn't care uh, and, and they weren't rewarded uh, for, their, for their efforts. So the question now is, can you find a team uh, that can really not only build something, but is able to attract value for that team. Will they, and as, as a result, you as an investor, be rewarded? Now, we all agree here that VR, AR, you know, light field, all that stuff is, is amazing technology, but like what we saw in, in, in 3D, I mean, people didn't really care. I and mean, Avatar was an amazing movie, but it wasn't because it was shot in 3D. It was just a, an amazing movie, period. And so the question is, will artists find ways to use these technologies to create amazing experiences where those experiences are only possible in these new media? If not, if, if that doesn't happen, then unfortunately these, I mean, VR and AR is going to be the next 3D, unfortunately. That's right. I actually feel that uh, if, you, if you think about the entrepreneurship now, I think people have moved the proof of concept stage way earlier. So now if you see, maybe Greg uh, sees the deals where he is already, some people coming up to him and showing the proof of concept. So I think from an investor point of view, you are actually getting a lot of the proof points earlier now that as a Series A investor, you, you did not get that before. On the, is it possible, not on the, does it matter though? That's the key differentiation. I, I did, it's uh, easier to build these things. Well, but it's I less likely that these teams have people that understand how to make it matter. And a lot of these early teams have incredible engineers who are capable of building things that have never before existed. Yeah. And so, by the way, for investors, uh, sexy tech is extremely dangerous. How many Don't of you in it. the audience were around We should during be the only ones who should do it. <laughs> during no one else. During clean tech. How many, how many people remember uh, seeing solar companies, biofuel companies, wind companies? I mean, it was... 
it was, it was an interesting time. There were extremely uh, brilliant physicists, chemists coming to us with these amazing ideas to turn uh, you know, uh, human waste into energy and, and it was just absolutely amazing. Uh, but the problem was that at the end of the day, the, the economics just didn't, it just took too long uh, for these technologies to hit those economics that they were aiming for and the money just wasn't there. Now the, you know, the financial kind of disaster didn't really help there either. Um, but the moral of the story there is that you shouldn't be too enamored by, by the sexiness uh, of the technology and focus on, on fundamentals. And the problem is that a lot of these people, these entrepreneurs that are carrying these technologies forward are just so buried and you know, laser focused, which they should be, on what they're carrying forward, which is technology, that they just don't have the bandwidth in most cases to really evaluate the broader impacts and the basics of the business. And it's our jobs as, entrepreneurs, as, as, as investors and as mentors to these companies to help them with that and not simply just rely on the sexiness of the technologies. Again, more often than not, you're not gonna be paid or rewarded for carrying that sexy technology forward. I, I think that that's a, that's a really, really great point um, and something that I think younger investors um, can, can get lost in. Um, you know, I think when you speak to people, especially who are a, a lot of people who are around VR, um, the passion with which they speak about the industry is is amazing, um, and um, it scares everyone else. <laughs> and and I think you know one of the things that I did at one point during kind of the my investment um, my time as an investor, which hasn't been very long, but. It was basically sit back and look at all of the industries and and hype cycles that have happened in the past and why they failed. Like Shaheen mentioned, like you know, if you were sitting in the audience and, and all this clean tech stuff was happening, you know, I you could just so easily imagine people in the audience being like, "Duh! Obviously, we need clean renewable energy. Like this is a slam dunk. This is the future." Um, and I'm sure that there have been many other industries, and I've found many other industries in the past that were very similar. Um, and so recognizing those pitfalls and being able to get out of the weeds and get a top-down view of, of what has happened in the past and what could potentially go wrong now, I think is super important. And by the way, that brings us back to team, in my opinion, because um, it's amazing to be able to have, and if these are very rare, by the way, to have an amazing uh, technology leader coupled to um, an entrepreneur that, again, really understands the impact of the technology can help navigate uh, that company with this technology um, as part of its arsenal. Yeah, and so one of the things that I've been doing a lot, I'm happy to share, because particularly for IoT, there's so many different vertical and uses, so I found myself spending a lot more time talking to industry experts, and a lot of these early stage, because there's no revenue coming in, and I don't believe purely doing Kickstarter only will work, so a lot of these guys have to end up doing enterprise deal, right? It's B2B. So their ability to be able to sell, not just talking about the cool gadget or the feature, but really like overall as a, as a whole market, like where, where do they sit? I remember going to some other demo day. Literally, there's like these two guys from Australia trying to raise a 20 million pre for a drone just because they said they get the first. And this is like a very huge difference between you claim that you're first mover versus a more structure um, to make sure that, you know, so what, you'd be the first one to do commercial drones. Amazon's still going to do more and more and more. Um, anyway, we have only five minutes left, so, so what we're going to do is a really, really quick fire, hot or not. I'm going to say a whole bunch of stuff, and you guys are going to tell me hot or not, okay? Thumbs up, thumbs down. All right, drones for filming, for movies. Come on, come on. Mm, not interested. <laughs> nah. Not. A, a swarm of drones doing volumetric capture of a whale migration <laughs> uh -huh. would be fucking cool. <laughs> All right, Ajay. Not. Not. Drone for mapping. Sure. <laughs> not. Oh my god. Map? Yes. Uh, <laughs> not. Okay. Mapping uh, is over. That's already uh, done. How about drone for public safety? Sure. <laughs> Luke, Luke Warren. You're not good at this game. I've been trying to be politically okay. correct here. Luke Warren. Right, right, right. Repeat the rules. Okay, so let's, let's re okay, move on. Three minutes. Um, IoT wearable. Hot. Not. 
Uh, once they have cell chips and we pay for them via AT&T plans, hot. <laughs> <laughs> not. You, can't, you can't caveat your hot I can or not. Caveat. It's my microphone, Qualify buddy. I can do whatever I want until they shut this mic off. All right, uh, so uh, I, I, IoT for kids and education or robotics. Hot. 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 How about for elderly? Same thing, IoT and robotics. Hot. Not. Huh. All right. Hot. Hot. Who's going to pay for it? <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, for, for your parents. All right. Uh, IoT and robotics for health. That's what we sort of talked about. Hot. I'm sorry. I didn't get health. 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 Uh, health. Healthcare. Robotics. IoT. I IoT. What's not. Up? Everything's connected to the internet, so. Yeah. True that. Hot. Yeah. Not. Not. All right. VR for education. Hot. Not. Hot. Hot. <laughs> Caveat, this is VR really for gaming. Hot. Hot. Not. Hmm. Not. VR for medical. Ther therapy. And uh, hot. Not. Huh. Arachnophobia. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> Not. Start caveating. Otherwise, okay, it's three, three more. Uh, VR for travel. Last two. Um, hot. 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 Not. Final, final. VR for porn. O obvious. <laughs> hot. Obvious future. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Ajay? Hot. <laughs> okay. So with that, this is our final Quote, question. Sense. What a way to wrap up the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for our very, really sexy investors. Thank, Thank you. you.